Unless you're consistently following Tesla's every step, it's hard to grasp what is happening with the company as a whole. So I'm going to provide a snapshot of everything that is happening with Tesla, starting with the production of the Model 3. I made a video about Tesla's Model 3 back in December. Their goal back then was to achieve a production rate of 5,000 Model 3s per week by 4th quarter 2017. But by December, they only produced around 220 cars total. This was due to a major bottleneck in production with the Model 3's battery pack, which is produced at Gigafactory 1 in Nevada by partner company Panasonic. Panasonic planned to automate the problematic areas as soon as possible and claimed production should increase soon after. The bottleneck pushed Tesla's production rate goal to 2,500 cars per week by March 2018 and 5,000 cars per week by June. The challenge Tesla will have to overcome is their ambitious attempt to completely automate the manufacturing process. Per Tesla's website, the factory is one of the world's most advanced automotive plants with 5.3 million square feet of manufacturing and office space on 370 acres of land and they are focused on achieving the world's most automated manufacturing systems while ensuring its large factory workforce is trained in the advanced skills unique to Tesla's production processes. So the Fremont factory is known to be one of the most automated auto factories in the world. Here are some pictures from April of last year of the line of hundreds of Kuka robots fresh out of the box. You see, most manufacturers automate the stamping, welding, and painting processes, but they leave final assembly to human workers. But Tesla is taking the process a huge step further by largely automating final assembly on top of previous processes. And this approach is ambitious as typically manufacturers automate around 5% of the final assembly tasks. And automation complicates fixing issues as well. You see, instead of training humans to work more efficiently or fixing problem areas, skilled engineers are needed to manage, program, and maintain the robots. So fixing problem areas is not as simple. The fact is that there are tens of thousands of components in each car and it's extremely difficult to fully automate the process efficiently. And typically manufacturers get the process in place first and then bring in robots, whereas Tesla took the opposite approach. But Tesla's push to hyper automate the manufacturing process exemplifies what makes them so compelling because they want to innovate and revolutionize at every turn. So we are now into April. Where is Tesla's production rate of Model 3 at? Is the ambitious attempt for hyper automation finally paying off? Well, according to an email from Elon Musk to several media outlets, Tesla is now producing over 2000 units per week. This is still a bit shy of the goal of 2,500, but this is still a sizable and impressive improvement from where they were back in December. The email also mentioned a new target production rate of 2,500 cars per week by June 2018. And based on the progress they made from December to now, I am confident that they will reach a 2,500 per week production rate by June. While the outlook of the Model 3 looks optimistic, Tesla was at the center of a handful of bad headlines last month, including a fatal Model X crash in California. The car was put into autopilot mode moments before it crashed into a barrier and caught on fire. Tesla says that the driver received several visual and audio hands-on warning, but the car did not detect hands for six seconds leading up to the collision. Tesla maintains that drivers are safer when they have autopilot activated than when they don't. Tesla references a National Highway Traffic Safety Administration report that found that autopilot reduced crash rates for Tesla by 40%. March really was an awful month for the company as they announced that they are voluntarily recalling 123,000 Model S vehicles because issues with the power steering component. The problem lies with excess corrosion in the power steering bolts and this is mostly in cold climates that use calcium or magnesium road salts. Regardless of this detail, Tesla will be replacing the components of all Model S vehicles built before April 2016. Now let's shift to a more positive aspect of Tesla with their push to enter the freight truck market. If you don't know, Tesla announced that they're planning to produce a fully electric semi truck with a hauling capacity of 40 tons and a range of 800 kilometers per charge. It will be powered by four electric motors, the same kind that powers the Model 3. 
So at 258 horsepower per motor, Tesla's semi-truck will have 1032 horsepower. Fully loaded, the truck will be able to accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour or 96 kilometers per hour in 20 seconds. And according to Musk, there's going to be huge cost savings compared to diesel trucks. And on March 26, FedEx announced that they reserved 20 semis and they join a long list of companies. Some of the main ones include UPS with 125 reservations, Pepsi with 100, Cisco with 50, Anheuser-Busch with 40, Walmart with 15, along with 14 other companies. Tesla is currently testing the prototypes of the trucks which have been spotted throughout California in preparation of production slated for next year. And so most of the attention surrounding Tesla goes to their electric vehicles but the company actually has a flourishing energy division. Tesla Energy launched in 2015 and now is a global leader in both commercial and residential energy solutions. The commercial energy segment centers around the Power Pack, which is a rechargeable lithium ion battery stationary energy storage product, which are essentially cabinets each containing 16 individual battery pods. Each unit has a capacity of 210 kilowatt hours of power, and the power pack architecture allows for an infinitely scalable module layout. It's designed to function outdoor in all environments with no additional structures or covers required. And in November 2017, Tesla installed a massive array of power packs to construct the 129 megawatt hour battery system in Australia, which is the largest in the world and has enough capacity to power 30,000 homes. Since then, Tesla has installed power pack systems in Puerto Rico, the U.S. territory that is still recovering from the devastating Hurricane Maria. And the company has plans to install another system in Australia, this time with a 50 megawatt hour capacity. Another side of the energy division centers around its $2 billion acquisition of SolarCity in 2016. Since the acquisition, Tesla has set up 600 kiosks and plans to expand that to over 800 out of the over 2,200 Home Depot stores by the end of the year. And Tesla will be pushing its residential rooftop solar panels and power wall, which is the battery designed for homes that store the energy generated by the solar panels. According to Musk, Tesla's solar roof is truly the first of its kind and there is significant complexity in both its manufacturing and installation. The new solar roof is like a conventional roof, but it has power producing cells inside, and this will be a key product for Tesla. And the demand for installation is really high, with a backlog of over a year. In order to meet this demand, Tesla will eventually need to hire more workers at the solar factory in Buffalo, New York. So as you can see, Tesla is pushing the boundaries of innovation at every turn, at the same time fighting adversity. And through all of the misfortune and setbacks this past year, Musk posted an April Fool's tweet making light of the situation and this is a sign that Tesla's worst days are behind them. And I hope this is the case because I can't wait to see how they continue to shape the world in the years to come. Alright, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neoscribe, and I'll see you on the next journey. Hey guys, I had a blast making this video. Tesla is such a fascinating company, and I hope they continue to innovate for many years to come. So when I decided to make this Tesla update video, I couldn't really find an interesting connection or thesis to explore and I didn't want to force one either. So I reached out to my pal Joe Scott for some advice and he made me realize that it's okay to mix it up that I don't need to have a particular style in every video. And, and so this video probably felt very familiar to my older subscribers as it was more straight to the point like my older videos. And honestly it was fun to simply report the information again like I used to. So with all that said, you can expect a mix of videos from me. Some will have deeper connections and some will simply just be informational. Anyway, if you connect with my content and want to support this channel, you can visit my Patreon page in the description below. You can pledge as little as a dollar a video. Every bit helps. Thank you all so much and I'll see you on the next journey.